zero intro here to the chapter radians. Now this is an angle measure that's very, very fundamental. And you probably first learned about this in trigonometry. Here we have a circle, radius r, angle theta, and arc length s, the distance along the circumference there in that, in that section. Now we're going to define the angle in terms of radians by taking the ratio of the arc length with the radius. So you can think of that as a definition. When we have that definition, we have the angle in radians. Now the angle here can go from zero to two pi to get yourself one circle. And it can continue and get four pi, you know, you know, six and whatever. So here the idea is that the reason why this angle goes from zero to two pi, you can see that as like a derivation. Like for example, we know first that the R is correlated to that the circumference. So the arc length is part of the circumference. So the arc length, let's say, S goes from zero all the way around once would be two pi r. So we can start with this knowledge since this is learned first in mathematics that the circumference of a circle is two pi r. Then once when you have that and then go to this definition with the radians that S over r is the angle. If you divide all three of these by r, r goes into zero, zero times. r goes into s, that's the angle in radians. And then r goes into here, two pi. So that's to demonstrate that the angle will go from zero to two pi to make one circumference for the angle to sweep out one circumference. So that's very, very important to note these two ranges that as the S goes from zero to two pi R, the angle goes from zero to two pi. So if we go around halfway, if we wanna make some correlation now with angles and degrees, if you go around halfway, that's a 180 degrees. And this here is 90 degrees, if you wanna come up at the top here and say start there at zero degrees. So that means that 180 degrees corresponds to pi radians. Now, technically, mathematically speaking, the radians is has no dimensions because centimeters cancel centimeters or meters cancel cancels meters but it's it's nice to think of it as having a dimension which we can call radians or rad even though it's, it's dimensionless this will help us in making conversions for example if we have 45 degrees and you want to convert to radians you would use the conversion rules that we taught many, many classes ago, you want to cancel degrees, and we know 180 corresponds to pi. So this is multiplying by unity since pi equals 180 degrees. And this will help us convert. Now 45 goes into 90 twice, it goes into 180 four times. So this is pi over four. And you could use a calculator and, you know, put in for the pi 3.14159, like this, divide by four, 
and to force the figures you would get 0.7854. A lot of times we just leave it as pi over 4. In other words, an angle of pi over 4, and it's understood when you see the pi that we're talking radians, we don't even put the RAD down. But whenever you're in doubt about communicating, always put down more than you need to just make sure that the communication is going to be at 100%. Now we can review from trigonometry class. So we'll end this little intro section with this review. Now the convention is to put zero degrees over here, not the right, and let's step by 90 degrees. So we would go 90 degrees, and it's listed here 90, and then we go 90 more is 180, 90 more is 270, and 90 more takes us back to the starting point. So that means that this would be pi over two, since pi is 180, this is half pi over two, and this would be three halves down there. Now we can step with 45 degrees. We showed that 45 is pi over four with a conversion, but here you can see if, if you go to pi is 180, take one half, it's pi over two is 90, one half of one half is one fourth, so that's pi over four. And then if we step another pi over four, we have two fourths, which is a half. And then if we step, here's three fourths pi, and that's going to be adding 45 each time. So 45 plus 45 is 90. Add 45 is 135. And we add 45 again. You get 180. And that's 4 times pi over 4 to get you 1 pi. Then if you add 45 again, you get 225. So that's 5 fourths. Add again 6 fourths takes you to 6 fourths pi reduces to 3 halves pi, and that's the 270, adding the 45 again. Add 45 to the 270, get 315, that's 7 fourths pi. And then if we add 45 again, we get back to go to home, and that's 8 fourths is going to be 2 pi. Now, if we go by 30 degrees, we go 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330. You can, you can go by, forget the zero, and just go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36. It's easier than put the zero on. So this would be one third of the way to 90. So one third of pi over two is pi over six. So it's pi over six. And then if you double that, you get two six, which is one third. And then three six is one half. So it's nice to go through this exercise to master your angles and see how they're related. And if we go another 30 over here, this 30 here, see one six, two six, three six, this would be four six, which reduces to two thirds. Then if we go 30 more, we have five six. And if we go another six, we get six six. And six six is equal to one. Then 30 more takes us to seven six, and 30 more down to here to, to 240 would be 8 6, and 8 6 reduces to 4 thirds. And then if we go to 9 6, 9 6 pi reduces to 3 over 2. So it's all, all working out so nicely. And then if you go to 10, 6, 10, 6 reduces to 5 thirds. 
I had another 30, there's your 300. I had 30 more, we're at 330, and that would be 11.6. And then finally, 12.6 gets you back to two pi, is back to zero. So it's a nice little review of trigonometry that we include here in our intro section for the chapter on rotation.